All right, well, equilibrium. Well, as usual with equilibrium, we're going to need an ice box. So I see two moles and six liter container. Oh yeah, so we're gonna need molarity. So the concentration of A initially is 0 0.33. The concentration of B initially is 0 0.5. And C, well, that's nothing. We gotta figure out how much each of these changed by, and then we need equilibrium. It tells us that at equilibrium, the concentration of B, or of A, sorry, is 0 0.297. And we're trying to find the concentration of B. I know that when the change occurred, this is going to be minus X and this is going to be minus 2X. I don't care about C, but it would be plus X. Well, how did I get from 0.33 minus X to that? Well, we can solve for X. So in this case, X is going to equal 0.033. Well, that works. Now I know X. So the concentration of B then is going to be 0 0.5 minus 2 times 0 0.033 equals. So we end up with 0 0.434 as the equilibrium concentration of B, which makes sense because we know that B is going to be reduced as the equation, or rather as the equilibrium shifts towards products. To solve this problem, of course, we first are going to have to figure out the concentrations of everything. I'll leave you to do that. And I ended up with that information. Now to figure out the direction of the shift, we're gonna have to calculate for Q. Q, of course, using initial concentrations. So let's solve for Q. Remember, Q is products over reactants. And so we end up with 0 0.208. Now, in this case, Q is greater than K. And Q is products over reactants. And if Q is greater than K, that means we have too much product. So we have to shift towards reactants. So this thing is going to shift this way. So the change, these are our initial concentrations. So the change means this is going to gain 2X. This is going to lose X. So at equilibrium, we have 0 0.2 plus 2x, 0 0.0554 minus x, and 0 0.15 minus x. So 1 times 10 to the negative second is going to equal products over reactants. much better straight line. Now you just have to solve for X. So in this case we end up with X is equal to 0 0.0470. So the concentration of HF is going to be 0.2 plus 2x, 0 0.294. And the concentration of H2 is 0 0.0554 minus x. And the concentration of fluorine is 0.15 minus x. And we're done. Even though this problem deals with pressures,
um, doesn't matter because the equilibrium relationships for pressures works in the same way that it does for concentrations. So there's the important information except that this is at equilibrium and we're solving for this one. Well, it's just like with concentrations. I'm going to take 0 0.976 and that's going to equal the products 0 0.3 squared multiplied by x divided by 0 0.52 squared. Solving for x, which is the equilibrium concentration of oxygen, I end up with 2.93 atmospheres. That's all there was to that problem. On this problem, one of the things that you really need to know is that because pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles, we can treat each of these molages like we would pressure for an equilibrium reaction. So here's what we have at equilibrium. And the question asks how much of something, let me look again, mm, hydrogen, yeah. How much hydrogen do we have at the beginning? Interestingly enough, we don't even need a K to solve this problem. We know that the change for this, this was zero at the beginning because the reaction said a mixture of these two was allowed to come to equilibrium. So I know that this had to gain x, 2x rather. So to solve for x, well, zero plus 2x has to equal that. So 2x has to equal 1.7, which allows me to solve for x. All right, so x is 0 0.85 moles. Well, that meant this had to lose 3x. So this is what we're looking for, this one. I don't know why I erased that, but I did. So 3.10 at equilibrium had to equal some original amount. Let's call that um, H2, yeah. Some original amount minus 3x. Well, I know this original amount minus 3, and I know x is 0 0.85, had to equal 3.10. All right, then, so the original amount of hydrogen comes out to be 5.65 moles. End of the problem. Oh look, another equilibrium problem. Aha. Well, the good news is we have moles per one liter, so concentration should be painless. And so I'm going to write all that down because it's a lot easier than having all those words. And this question's asking us then to solve for the value of k. k equals what? Well, here's my initial concentrations. Here's by how much it changed and equilibrium concentrations. Ooh, let's see if I can, nope, almost a straight line. Well, I know that the ammonia had to gain 2x to get this value. And the hydrogen had to lose 3x and the nitrogen had to lose x. So let's solve for x. So we have 2x is going to equal 0 0.61. All right, so that gives us a value of x equals 0 0.305. Okay, well, that means we can do the hydrogen concentration. So 4 minus 3 times 0 0.305, 3.085, or if we're going to pay attention to 3 sig figs, 9, and then 2 minus 0 0.305, this should be 1.70. So K, products over reactants, so our products, 0 0.61 squared reactants, 1.7 times 3.09 cubed. 
which gives us an equilibrium constant of 7.42 times 10 to the negative third. Welcome to another equilibrium problem. Okay, so there's the information that we need. Except for a few small details, we could label our ice box. So here we have our initial. We don't know how much of that. Got to figure out how much changed. But we do know that at equilibrium, 39% of 1 dissociated. So what is our concentration at equilibrium? So that means at equilibrium, we have 0.61 because 0.39 came off of that. Which means that on this side then, this had to gain two times that value of x, which is 0.39. So two times that value gives us 0.78. Now we can solve for k. So that's product, 0 0.78 squared divided by reactants, 0 0.61. So our equilibrium constant, 0 0.997. For this problem, let's start off with our usual ice box. All right, we initially have this much. And that's concentration, but we had one liter, so it was easy. And that's a zero. And then for our change, this is minus x, and this will be plus 2x. And then, and, oh, better for a straight line. At equilibrium then, 0 0.042 minus x, and this will be 2x squared. So k is 4.66 times 10 to the negative eighth, which will equal our products, which is 4x squared over the reactants, 0 0.042 minus x. So we just need to solve for x. So we end up with a value, x value equal to 2.211 times 10 to the negative fifth. Oh, that's not much at all. Well, remember, this is concentration. So E, we have our equilibrium concentration of N2O4 is going to equal, let's see, brain only gauge, oh yeah. So we need that point zero four two minus X, which essentially is, 0. Point, yeah, that's right, 0. 0.042. And then our concentration of NO2 is going to equal 2 times X. So we end up with 4.42 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so the last thing we need to do is find our total pressure. And if you remember from Dalton's Laws of Partial Pressures, that's the sum of each of the gases inside the container. Well, I know that my moles here, my total moles is going to be 0 0.042, and my total moles here are 4.42 times 10 to the negative fifth. So the sum of those two is basically 0 0.042. And that's my moles times R times, we have to have negative 80 plus 273, 193, divided by the volume, which is 1. So my total pressure 0 0.042 times 0 0.08206 times 193, and I get a total pressure of 0 0.665 atmospheres. All right, no big surprise, we have another equilibrium problem. 
All right, there's your important information, except I'm going to add the icebox elements to it. So we have I there, and we don't have any of this. And the change will be minus 2x, and the change here will be x plus x. Let's see if I can do a straight line this time. Oh, better. Okay, at equilibrium then, this is going to be 1 minus 2x, and this will be x. So k is going to equal 7.5. Now, mind you, this is products over reactants. So our products over 1 minus 2x squared. So now we just need to solve for x. Okay, so for this one, x is going to equal 0 0.5. 386. So the concentration of NO2 is going to equal 1 minus 2x, so that's 1 minus 2x, and we end up with 0 0.227, and the concentration of N2O4, well that's easy, that's x. And we're done with number eight. For this problem, there's not much to it. It's a pretty straightforward problem. So there's the information that we need. And other than, of course, we're going to need to draw an ice box. So here we have initial. And I don't have any of these. But I know that at the change, so here I'm going to with the change. And this is going to be minus 2x, x, 2x, sorry, and x. And I know that at equilibrium it said 4.4% of this is dissociated. So I need to figure out what 4.4% of 1 is. So I'll, I'll let you do that. So that means we have 0 0.956 remaining. The question is, what is x? Well, we know that 1 minus 2x has to equal 0 0.956. So now let's solve for x. So in this case, we have x is going to equal 0 0.0220. Well, that's great. So now that we know x, we can figure out the concentrations of the rest of the species. So now we can find the concentration of this one, which of course then is 2x, 0 0.044. And this one's x, so we have to do half of that. So x divided by 2, and interesting. But it's 0 0.022. Not quite sure why my calculator spit out the wrong answer, but I'll live with it. It's a good thing I can use common sense when I enter the wrong thing into the calculator. All right, now to solve for K, we know K is going to be the products over the reactants. So our first product is NO, so 0 0.044, and I have to square that because of this 2. Multiply by 0 0.022, and then I'm going to divide that by 0 0.956, and I also need to square that. So that'll give us a value of k of 4.66 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, well, for this problem, get rid of the words, put down the important stuff, and make an ice box. I know, I feel like I'm sounding like a broken record. Make an ice box. But yeah, you really should. So here we go. Initial the change. Well, because I don't have any of this, I know this has to be minus 
2x because of the 2. This will be plus 2x and this will be plus x. So at equilibrium, this will be 1 minus 2x, 2x, and 0 0.989 plus x. So there's our equilibrium constant, 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's going to equal our products. Oh, i got to clear my throat. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, so products, in this case I have 2x squared times 0 0.989 plus x, and I'm going to divide that by 1 minus 2x squared. Now we just need to solve for x. So we end up with a value of x equaling 0 0.002 zero zero to pay attention to sig figs. So the concentration then of NOCl is going to equal one minus two x. So that's one minus two x. So we end up with zero point nine nine six. The concentration of NO is two x. So that's 0 0.00400. Well, I feel silly shoving that in the calculator now that I look at it. And for this one, we end up with 0.989 plus x. 0 0.991. We are done with problem 10. Okay, well, for this problem, it looks at things a little differently. And that's because this is what we call a heterogeneous equilibrium, because we have more than one state of matter involved. All right, so I'm just going to put up the important information right now. And the biggest question I guess we should answer is how much oxygen do we really have? Well, I can get the pressure of the oxygen at equilibrium. And maybe you should start off by writing the equilibrium expression for Kp, and that might help out. Well, if I write the equilibrium expression for Kp, I end up with Kp is equal to the oxygen concentration or since it's P, I guess I should say it a little differently, not the oxygen concentration, but the pressure of the oxygen, since we're dealing with Kp. Because, see, this is a solid and this is a solid, and those never go in the equilibrium expressions. So the pressure of the oxygen is 1.16 atmospheres. With this, can you now find the number of moles of oxygen? I think we can do that. So PV equals nRT, and we need the number of moles. So N is going to equal PV over RT. All right, so I'll give you a minute to solve for that. So the number of moles of oxygen then is 0 0.13 two moles. Well, I can convert that to grams, but I don't need to yet. Because remember, the question says what percent of calcium carbonate came off there? So let's take this moles of oxygen and convert that to moles of calcium carbonate. Well, that should be pretty easy since it's a one-to-one -one system. That means I have 0 0.132 moles of calcium carbonate. Now we can convert that to grams. Okay, so that's uh, 100.09 grams. So times 0 0.132. So we end up with 13.2 grams of calcium carbonate that dissociated. 
So to find the percent, it's 13.2 divided by 29.6. Multiply that times 100. So 13.2 divided by 29.6. And we end up with 45% of the calcium carbonate dissociated in this reaction. Ooh, look at this, a true or false question. I don't do that very often. Well, the concentration of the reactants is equal to products. Well, no, think about all of the different K values. No, no way that one can be true. No new product molecules are formed. Well, yeah. At equilibrium, you do get product molecules formed. It's a dynamic equilibrium. Things are constantly being made. The, the reaction flows both directions. The concentration of reactants is constant over time. I can see why you might choose that one. However, by the word constant, that tends to mean no change. Nothing is happening and things are changing. It appears constant, but it's actually dynamic. The rate of the reverse reaction is equal to the rate of the forward and both rates are equal to zero. That is correct. That is the correct answer because when the rates are equal to zero, that means the slope of that line is not changing. So the slope is zero because the rates are equal. Okay, for this particular problem, what did you choose? Well, if you chose this one, give yourself a round of applause. So what did you choose for this one? Well, if that's what you chose, you are correct. The reason that that one is the correct answer has to do with how we define K. See, K is products over reactants. And this value of K is huge, which means the amount that we have for the products as compared to the reactants has to be ginormous. So the reactants are going to be much smaller than the products at equilibrium. So what'd you guess for this answer? Well, if you guessed the correct answer was D, you got it. You see, from an earlier problem, we said that for the equilibrium values, K, there's only one value, but there's an infinite number of positions. There's an infinite number of values that you can do for products and reactants that would give this constant. This is simply a ratio as one shifts, the other one will to maintain this constant. So D does D in this case is the correct answer. The equilibrium constant value does not change. This problem is just asking you to use a formula. It's a plug and chug problem. Of course, you don't have to memorize this formula. It would be one of those that I would give to you. You just have to know how to use it. So KP in this case is going to equal 0.25 multiplied times the 0 0.08206 multiplied times 900 plus 273 and then you have to take this whole portion the RT and raise it to the change in N which is products the number of moles of the products minus the number of moles of the reactants so in this case that's 2 and 1 that makes 3 minus 4 and 1 makes 5 and now solve for K sub P. So we end up with a value of 2 point, let's check in sig figs, we need 2 sig figs, so 2.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. This question's is where we really start talking about Le Chatelier's principles, so I'm going to explain these. 
for starters, in terms of how heat affects the system, we would need to know if it's exothermic or endothermic, and that information wasn't given to us, so I really can't tell if this, side, this, this is false or not. I'm going to skip that one. It's a heterogeneous equilibrium. Well, that's true. This is a gas, and that's a solid. It's different states of matter. It's heterogeneous. If the pressure on the system is increased by changing the volume, the left side's favored. This part really doesn't matter. However, this part, the pressure on the system is increased. Well, this side contains two moles. And this side has two moles. And if I increase the pressure on the system, there's not going to be any change whatsoever. None because whether or not it's going to shift depends on which side has fewer or which side has more moles. So that's not going to matter, so that one's not right. If I add more hydrogen, so we're adding more of this, it increases the equilibrium constant. Well, that certainly isn't going to matter. The equilibrium constant K does not change for any given temperature. So that one's definitely the one that's false. And removing HI forces the equilibrium to the right. If this comes out, the equilibrium would have to shift towards products to replace it. And that's definitely a true statement. So the only possible answer we have is D. You do not change an equilibrium constant for any given temperature. This problem is asking us to compare Q versus K. And in this problem, Q is much, much smaller than K. So if you think of reactants and products, in this case, the reactants are much smaller than products, so our shift has to be towards products. And if Q is less than K, the system will shift to the right. And if you said A, give yourself a round of applause. My first thought when I looked at this problem was, oh, I'm probably just going to have to calculate Q. So I went ahead and wrote a balanced chemical equation. But the problem with calculating Q, which is not that big of a deal, I mean, sure, I could get Q with this, but where's the K value? How am I going to know what to do with the Q information if I don't have K? So the end result of this is more information is necessary to solve this problem. For this problem, we definitely should solve for Q. That's just my opinion. So solving for Q in this case, well, let's see. Q is equal to products over reactants. So our products are concentration of CO is 1.5, and our concentration of water is 1.5 and the reactants is 1.5 and 1.5. Ooh, so that's going to equal 1. And so Q is less than K. So that means we're going to have a shift towards, that's right, a shift towards products. So we know that the mass of CO has to increase. So we're looking at this one, and the mass of CO, would, or this one, or this one. Now we have to look at the temperatures. Would the temperature remain constant? Well, this is an exothermic reaction. So what I like to do for exothermic reactions, instead of writing, I'm sorry, this is an endothermic, my bad. What I like to do instead of writing delta H is put an E here as a reactant. So when it's an endothermic reaction, I think of energy as just one of the reactants. So if the shift goes this way, then this has to go down. So there should be a decrease in temperature. Well, this one doesn't work. Nope, because this says increase, so that wouldn't work. And this says remain constant, so that doesn't work. So the only correct answer 
is B. Taking a look at this system using Le Chatelier's principle, we are going to add that guy to the system. So if we add more of this, that's going to automatically shift the reaction towards products. As it shifts towards products, this will then decrease. And here's even more Le Chatelier's principle. So we're going to increase the pressure. When we increase the pressure, it's going to shift towards the side with the fewest moles. So here we have three moles on this side and two moles. So if we kind of like squeeze this system together, it's going to shift that direction. If we shift towards products, we're going to end up producing more of that. Continuing along with this same theme, if we add argon to this system, what is it going to do? Yeah, it has absolutely no effect. See, argon's an inert, non-reactive gas. So it would be like saying, hey, look, we're going to put one mole of argon on this side, and we're going to put one mole of argon on this side. There's no effect whatsoever, no change at all. Okay, for this final and last question. So, we are going to increase the temperature. Well, we can kind of think of that as energy, which is written as an exothermic reaction. So, if this goes up, this thing has to shift that way, which is towards the reactants. So, we end up producing more of that. Phew, that was a long study guide. Well, happy studying. Good luck on the test.